All right, let's do another one. Uh, today we're going to be working on number nine. Oh, this is a low number one. Palindrome number. Given an integer x, return true if x is a palindrome integer. An integer is a palindrome when it reads the same forward or backward as forward. Okay. Um. Could you solve it without converting the integer to a string? Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so the straightforward approach. Uh, check if is equal after to string dot reversed. Basically, um, this would this would also be a method call. Um, but if we wanted to solve it without converting the integer to a string, let's see. Um, then there's probably a mathematical approach. Uh, at least a sort of call approach. Looking at example two, I think it seems pretty obvious that negative numbers will never be a palindrome simply because of this negative right there. Then the next question is how do we read the numbers such that we do um, we check it. Well um, This will be a sort of mathematical algo approach. I'm thinking of something like this. <clears throat> the problem for me is that I don't... I was thinking of something like a palindromic uh, similar to what I used to, a, a sort of bad solution for palindromic linked list, where we would be like, um, produce a stack of values, and this would be like building them up into a... Oh, yeah, maybe we could do that. Produce a stack of values. Um, or in this case, a list for each digit, then check if the list stack is a palindrome. Of course, this wouldn't work if it were a stack because you could only peek the top. The question is that a stack approach would be pretty fast. The question is, how do we know when we've hit the middle of the, um, when we've hit the middle of the number, basically. Um, and this is effectively, this is effectively the string approach, except that we're not using a string, we're just breaking down the, the digits. And this would just be like, add, um, last value to the list, by mod, hmm, something, I'll have to figure it out, then divide by that mod. 10. I think it's mod 10. Because we're working in base 10, we just want the last number, so mod 10. That makes sense. And then we divide by that mod 10. That's how we build up the list. However, is there a better way to do this? This would solely depend on the number of digits. So runtime is capped by the number of digits in our number. Um, 
because we need to iterate over them twice. So it would be linear runtime, linear space, because we need to store each digit, right? And so it would be O of n, where n is just the number of digits in x. Is there a way that I could cap this instead by the value itself? And I mean, for this one, it's also there's an argument to be made that uh, you could say that it's technically linear runs or sorry, constant uh, time and space due to the fact that we have a cap on the size of an integer. I think that's fine. Um, though I guess that really depends on probably your interviewer, right? Because um, it is a little bit of like a, a tricky situation there. But I'm going to go ahead and code this up. And then we'll see where we're at in terms of the rankings. And then we'll see uh, where we need to improve from there. So we'll start by uh, having our digits list. Um, list. We want a mutable list of int. Um, and then we'll say while. And we'll get a different ref to the value so our number because we're going to need to mutate this so while number is greater than zero also yeah we can just say if x less than zero return false because a negative number in this case because we have this negative will never ever be zero um, or never ever be a palindrome so now we don't have to worry about um, a palindromic number. Uh, if x is less than 10, return true because single numbers or single digit numbers will always be single digit numbers will always be um, a palindrome. So we can sort of pseudo optimize there by just carving out another case, another case for that number. Because if we have just a single digit, then of course it's always going to be a palindrome. This one is still going to be, well, number is greater than zero though, I think. We'll do a digits list dot add um, number mod 10. And then number divide equals 10. So this gets the ones place, or at least it should get, get the ones place of our current number and then we divide by 10 so we just remove that um, and then we want to stop once uh, once we hit once we hit 0 which is after the last number then we can say var left is equal to digits uh, 0 var right is equal to digits list the size minus 1 while left is less than right. So basically we're just doing the standard sort of uh, is the list a palindrome from a previous leak code question. Uh, we can say that if digits list dot si or left is not equal to digits list right return false and then left plus plus right minus minus um, and then at the end, if all that is fine, then we just return true. So these are the first sort of corner cases. Uh, this is mostly an optimization here. We create the initial list and we uh, take this number because we don't want to mutate the initial number. Um, then while the this current number that we have is greater than zero, so we just want to basically carve out and add to the list each digit. Uh, we want to, in order to get that ones place, we will uh, apply mod 10 and then we'll uh, scooch that over by dividing by 10. Then we just run basically the is the list of palindrome algorithm. So set a left, set a right, and then two pointer approach while they're uh, less than, while the left is less than the right, 
then we move it and compare. If it's an odd, then they'll meet at the middle, then left equals right, and that's fine, we just return from there. And if the, it is even and they swap over it, then that's also fine, we just end there as well. So this handles both cases. And at the end, if we don't find any discrepancy, then we just return true. So I think this seems, uh, this covers most of uh, what we need. So let's go ahead and uh, run at least the first example, and then we'll also double check uh, with the other uh, examples once this runs. Let's also run the other example test cases. Okay, cool. And let's run a submit. Okay, so that seems to be at least a solution for this. Perhaps there may be an even faster solution, but it seems like this is a fast, a sufficiently fast solution in this case. So I think I'm actually going to leave it here for today and actually run a very, very short video compared to some of my other videos. But yeah, this, is, this was actually a pretty fun question, um, sort of adopting some of the things that we've seen before with the number manipulation, dividing by 10, mod 10, and then running uh, sort of a review of the two pointers, uh, is the list or is the array a, um, is the array a, sorry, a palindrome, basically. Um, and yeah, so we achieved 89.49% runtime and 95.09% .09 memory usage. And I'm fairly happy about that for there. So that's where I'm going to leave it for today. Um, so in any case, I hope you learned something and I'll see you for the next problem.